Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. And I'm Caleb Oaks. Hey, Caleb. Hey, Brick. So we've got an interesting one today. We do. What are we going to be talking about? So this is something that came up when we were traveling just a few weeks ago. Yep. We were sitting down for lunch talking about, you know, why, why is it so hard to hire BI people? And why are client, we're seeing our clients struggle with it. So yeah. we, we, you know, why is this happening? Yeah, I mean, good companies that we work with that just churn through BI resources, not, not uh, vendors, but actually employees, mm-hmm. just really struggling to get someone. Yeah, so the conversation kind of went to a place where we've been seeing people need this and they want to do this. They want to build their own internal team. So we started to think, well, how would how would we do it yeah. if we were at a company? How would we build a com- build a BI department? Right. And so we came up with some ideas on how we would do that. I mean, we we've done that for ourselves. We built a whole company that way. Mm-hmm. It's different though. It's, there's some challenges with building a small team over building a larger one in some ways. But why don't we start with talking about why, let's say, you know, we, we have a lot of really good customers, some that work with us for many months, often over years. But why would you want to get rid of your BI vendor if, if you have a good relationship and it's going well? It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's actually, this is kind of puzzling to me. Like, I, I get it. I get why people want to build an in, in-house team, take this stuff in-house and, and do it themselves. I, I understand the desire to do that. Um, but I do think that there's a bit of a, you know, a fallacy here around it's, you know, it's going to be cheaper or uh, better for us or safer or something. You know, there's, there's I mean, probably all of those things to some extent yeah. in the thinking there. And um, you know, it's reasonable. It's reasonable to think that. But, you know, from our side of the fence, what we're seeing is that we're honestly, we've been better than any internal team we've ever seen. So we're just straight up better than them. Um, and, and, and there's not like we're just somehow inherently just better. It's because we do this day in and day out. The number of scenarios that we see, uh, the amount of people we have 30, I mean, we have 20 something engineers. All they do is BI, right? You're not going to find a 20-person BI department, especially in the companies that we work with in that middle market right. area. So um, we're, we're just more effective at, at doing this stuff. We've seen more. We have more experience. So, I mean, I can understand why people would assume it's going to be less expensive, but our experience has been that as our clients are bringing on teams, they end up churning through employees because it's hard to get people that are good. Um, some of the reasons that you gave there, I think, or some of the, the um, uh, properties of a company that are different from us make it that way. So if you only have a couple of people, um, they don't have a team to learn from, you know, a, a, an experienced team. They also may not get sort of the, the varied experience that you'd like to have to be able to tackle all of these different problems. It, it seems a little self-serving for us to say, you know, why, but, but we've really thought about this. And, and actually, if you think about the amount of payroll costs that you'd need to take on to have a good internal BI team, um, you could make a case pretty quickly that it's going to be less expensive to have a good vendor who's who's giving you the ETLs and, and the reporting that you need just when you need it. I mean, one of the advantages of having a vendor is you're not paying them when they're not working on a project, whereas an employee, you're always paying. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe you have enough work in your company where you think, all right, I'm going to be able to keep three or four people busy. Um, it still can be challenging, I think, to get it done as efficiently and as effectively because those three or four people only have their skill set, whereas a good vendor hopefully has a larger team. And so as different problems come up, that larger team can step in and solve problems that, that the two or three person team just wouldn't have the experience to go after. Yeah. And sometimes the capacity, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, re- it's really interesting. And I think where I was going earlier was, um, you know, it's, it's really kind of the safety part, right? You might, maybe you feel like, you know, we can't be tied to this third party forever, which is totally understandable. And yeah, it's probably right. You I know, have those instincts yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and then if you, but if you really, you know, press into that, what you find is that building an internal team can be just as risky, um, if not more than having a, a third party out there doing it for you. Yeah. Right. 
All right. So I think that aside, let's talk about how would you do it. Yeah. Like, I, we want to be able to actually be really good at advising our clients on how to get self sufficient when they want to. And so, so. Where do you start? How do you think about it? Yeah, I think all those reasons that we just laid out is what why we started to think about this because yeah. you ultimately we want to help people get there, right, to where yep. they don't have to be tied to us forever, and we know it's not an easy thing to do yeah. for all those reasons and more that we just explained. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully we can start getting some of our thoughts out here and we'll refine them as we go, and ultimately it would be great if we could start helping people do this. Yeah. This may take us a couple episodes since we're trying to keep these shorter anyway, but mm -hmm. we can start on it today. I think uh, I think one of the things that spurred me to start thinking about it and talking about it with you and the rest of the, the senior team here is that you know, clients will ask us uh, early on in our relationship, hey, can we take this over? And our answer has always been, of course. I mean, we build it on your infrastructure. It'll be on your cloud tenants. We document it like crazy. We're happy to do training and um, handoff activities and so on. But the reality is it's been hard to make that happen. And so we want to figure out how to make it not hard and make it successful every time so that people aren't taking a shot at it, hiring a team, and then firing them or having them quit and coming back to us and now we're starting over again. It doesn't feel great because we, if they want to be self-sufficient, we want to help them do that. Right. We want to be able to answer that question with some, you know, some confidence. And quite yes. honestly, the confidence has waned over the past, you know, couple of years after yeah. watching people try this and it not working. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully this will help. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. So I think, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, taking over the BI requires a team. So if you don't have a BI team already in place, then you need to think about, all right, who do we need? When do we need them? If you've got a t BI team in place and you've hired us just to help augment on some stuff, this is not this is not your problem. You've already got a team in place. Um, and so you're bringing us in to flex on time. But we're thinking about um, co or, uh, companies that don't have a team. They're starting from scratch. Or they have someone who's sort of done some dabbling in Tableau or Power BI or something, but don't really have a, a professional. Right. And, you know, that that what you described, if you already have a team, that's kind of the end state, really, right. of like the ideal. You have a team that's handling some of the some of the things you need to do, but you can use us as kind of that flex capacity uh, yeah. when you need it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that first thing, you got to you got to build a team. And where do you start with that? You know, I mean, I think you start with that visualization engineer. You could make an argument that, no, you're going to need the data architect to, you know, do the ETLs and get the data into a place where the viz, viz engineer can do the reporting. But I would argue that, um, no, keep using your vendor for that. It's pretty specialized um, skill. And really what you want is to get someone who can start producing those reports that's showing the company the ROI and getting that person to where they're understanding the business and the business goals and levers to be able to start actually delivering ROI for that payroll money that you're putting out. Right. I think even if you don't have a vendor already, that's where you start. Yeah. Because you, you, you want to get reports to the business, not uh, spend forever dabbling in data. And that, that's actually one of our philosophies, right? You always start with the reporting, not necessarily mean you dive right into report development, but you you want to get reports out quickly. Yeah. So that definitely the right place to start. Yeah, because you want to get that adoption. You want to get that momentum within the company, that buy-in. Okay, so you hire that visualization person. What's it going to take to get them good? And how are you going to hire a good visualization person? Yeah, so luckily we've done a podcast <laughs> Shameless about that. Plug. <laughs> I, you know, I, the we we put some resources out. Go check out that other episode where we talk about hiring a good viz engineer. Yeah, so we do talk about that. I I think though, you know, once you get the person in, um, and, and in that podcast we really talk about how do you find that right person, how do you vet that person, and some of the resources we put in the notes for that will, will help with that. Um, Still, still not simple, but um, should help. But then, once you have them on board, how do you get them up to speed with the business so that they're engaging well and not just order takers? Which is the the downfall of Viz engineers is that they get with an executive, business executive, they get an order for a report. Often, the the executive will sketch it out for them on a whiteboard, and they just go build that exact thing. 
and it ends up not achieving the goal of delivering ROI. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the secret sauce, right? And hopefully you've found somebody that's able to do that. Um, but it might take some time to develop that thinking. And hopefully if you have a good BI vendor in there already, uh, that'd be the ideal state, then they can work through that with them, shadow, figure out how that process has gone, and then you know kind of adopt it as they go. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be my recommendation, actually. So even though you've got that person in-house now, have them work alongside uh, uh, an outside outside expert to help them get that skill set. Right. Yeah. And, you know, that might take, you know, a few months yeah. to get really good. We, you know, I think it would. I think it would take probably six months of, of shadowing. Yeah. And that might be on the low side. You know, we have some clients that do have teams and um, we've come in as they've already been in place and they're, you know, they're still learning from us. You know, we, we've set up some special engagements just to give them some training. I'm like, Here's the tools we use. Here's why we use them. Uh, so it has to be intentional. And I do think you're probably looking at six months yeah. of that. Yeah. Okay. So I think the next hire is probably that data architect. So you've got someone producing reports. Now you want to become self-sufficient on the ETLs and, and uh, data transforms and all that stuff. That's when you need the person that's got those deep SQL skills or whatever mm-hmm. platform you're working on. Yeah, right. You want you want someone that's going to be able to expand on the BI platform if you've got one. Um, if you don't, and this Viz engineer is just connecting to your sources and building reports, you want someone that's going to be able to come in and say, okay, this is how we're going to make these reports scalable, um, enrich them with other data sources, mash things up, and here's how we're going to do it. That's where your data architect comes in. Yeah. And it's hard to know exactly when that person comes in. I mean, you could hire that person at the same time you hire that first visualization engineer. Um, I would probably stagger them Mm -hmm. just so that visualization engineer sort of gets a foothold and starts knowing the business so that they can help sort of get in sync, get the the data architect in sync with the business. Yeah. I I think that's right. I think if you you bring in too many people, you'll start getting some, some interesting dynamics in terms of how the business or how the data is going to be structured and how, you know, it just, it just kind of creates a little bit of chaos that you can, you can eliminate or reduce by kind of stepping into it. Yeah, agreed. So then I think the next hire is some kind of a PM. Um, could be a department leader if they have the PM skills. I don't think it needs to be a full PM because the size of the department is quite small. But I think you need somebody who is going to be able to help interface with the business, help with prioritization, with managing projects, with um, getting uh, requirements, business requirements um, transferred in a good way to the engineers, um, doing communication, you know, update meetings and, and all of that stuff. You'd love to have that on day one, but I almost think it's overkill. Maybe you could borrow a PM from a different department to help with that on day one. Right. I think that would be the ideal situation. Either you hire some uh, a project manager in, and you, like you said, give them other responsibilities, or maybe you can augment a existing project manager's role with taking on the BI stuff. Yeah. So at this point, you know, we're looking at three people, and I think – you may even have two Viz people at this point. And then actually, depending on your data environment, let's say that your uh, PE-owned company is doing a, a buy and build strategy, you might need two data architects as well because you're doing integrations of all, all the add-on companies. So you're looking at significant payroll. I mean, you're probably, yeah. you know, I don't know, it depends on how many people and skill levels and what market you're in, but you're probably looking at half a million bucks a year or something like that. Yeah, I think that's that's probably a good benchmark to think about. I mean especially with salaries nowadays. I mean, you're probably looking at at least 100K per person, oh, yeah. probably a lot more for, you know, the more specialized roles like a data architect, you know. It's it's not cheap to do that. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Well, look, we've already, uh, we've gone over our, uh, <laughs> our time <laughs> limit here. I think this might be a good place to wrap uh, this part of the discussion, just kind of discussing you know, who the people are you need to hire and, and what it's likely to cost you. I, I think I would want to just touch just on the time frame just quickly that, you know, we sort of said six months to get that visualization person up to speed. Um, I'm thinking this whole process is probably no less than six months and probably more like 18 or 24 to get really self-sufficient. You've 
you've kicked out your BI vendor and you don't need to see them anymore. Right, right. And if that's the goal, you are probably looking at something like that, 18 to 24 months. Yeah. So, you know, if you do this, just be ready for that. I think that's another one of the things that has been challenging for people. They don't really know what to expect when doing this. Yeah. So hopefully that will help. Well, and if you're planning to do it, let's say someone's hiring us now and saying, hey, we want to become self-sufficient, we should talk about that time frame now. Mm -hmm. And if they're saying, yeah, I'd like it by the end of next year or middle of next year, okay, we need to help you get that first visualization engineer hired now and have them integrated into the projects so that they're getting up to speed. Right. So that you can get that timeline. Yeah, that's exactly right. Sooner you get started. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's more to more to talk about here. We'll come back and uh, and do some more another day. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. All right.